Hello YouTube, Mystery Report subscribers, Tutor Program subscribers, Black Star Report subscribers, everybody paying attention to the Mystery Explained and seeing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. This newsletter program, oh this is uh, newsletter number 5 for 2022. This uh, newsletter is about to be completed. This video link will go right here. Just like the Black Star Reports. And then this newsletter is going to be uploaded to the 2022 Mystery Report Dropbox folder. So when you subscribe to the Mystery Report program. Let me show you how to do that. Come right down here. Instead of the Black Star, you're down here in the Mystery Report. $25 a year gets you access to all of the Black... I'm sorry, all of the Mystery Report newsletters going back to 2019. And this is a tutor program. This gets you access for just $25 per year. This gets you into the tutor program so that you can write to me with your questions like Doug and Gary and these others that you see in these Mystery Report newsletters. Everybody that subscribes, you get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, for free. It's the EPUB version that you can read in your Kindle or with digital Adobe Adobe Digital Editions free on your computer. And uh, this is how you get a copy of the Mystery Explained. looks just like this. It'll be numbered number 92. It's the next one to go out out of the first 100 books. And if you're overseas, extra for shipping. And if you decide you might want to just have access to the newsletters, go, and then you, whenever you read the newsletters, there's a breadcrumb trail laid down for you. Start in 2019. Start with newsletter number one from 2019. That'll be on the two Gospels of the New Testament. There's a breadcrumb trail for you. That's laid through there. Then you realize, holy cow. You start seeing it, and the whole world changes, and you want more. Then you want a tutor program subscription. You just come over here and upgrade. 25 plus 25 is 50. And then you get discounts on your nano silver. And for those that want that do not want to use PayPal for whatever reason, there are other options. You can see right here Zelle and Cash App, and there are other options too. There's a PO box. Some people send silver. I'm not kidding you. Cash, silver, money orders, all kinds of things. Then uh, what you do is, as a non-supporter, as you write me right here, because you're not a supporter yet. This is the website email address. And then once you subscribe, you're going to get a Dropbox folder link notification email, and it's going to have the email address set up for supporters. Then you'll be writing me more in real time. Okay, back over here. This newsletter program is about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation and everywhere in between. Once you see three witnesses, Spirit, blood, and water, you start seeing them everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere. You see them in yourself. You see them in other people. You see them in the animals. The birds of the air are spirit witnesses. The beasts of the field, they're blood witnesses. The fish of the sea, water witnesses. The day is going to come in the future ages when there are no more birds and there's no more fish. That's going to happen. All the animals will be beast of the field. That's the same pattern with all of the spirit, water, and blood witnesses. Once you see the pattern, and then what you look at everything that's written in God's word, and then you realize who's testifying as a spirit witness, who's testifying as a blood witness, who's testifying as a water witness, and you know the testimony of all the witnesses, there are charts of them. Then you begin hearing the testimony from everybody testifying simultaneously to realize that you're hearing angel song. It's really, really a great thing. You have the song of the Lamb. You have the song of Moses. You have angel song. You have the Holy Bible is the only living document in the world. And the spirit of the word is incarnate in every believer. And that is the incarnation of heaven inside of us. That contains almighty God in him it's truly truly well this is my legacy book this is what i was born to do in my view 
this is what I would love to do 24 hours a day. The 9-11 investigation, all these other investigations, Project Black Star, all of them, they were their side paths that Lord God sent me on to help more people. But this is this is what I, this is where my heart is right here, helping those for whom Christ died to see God's in wisdom. That's my I'm I'm pulling up my foot, my shirt sleeves right now. I'm not kidding you. I get excited just like a little kid. Now my apologies that there are more of the news of the misreport newsletters. Before COVID, it was once a week, and last year there were only four. This is the fifth one for 2022. The sixth one is already uh, pre-construction. It's already put together. One or two more questions come in, that'll be put together, and that will likely be a report for December. And there'll likely be six for this year. Then uh, whenever you get your hands, you can go to uh, the website before I dig into this. You come right over here to the website and see the scripture section right here? Start right here, two Gospels of the New Testament. This is the short version, only 15 minutes. The long version is video number one from 2019. So this is, lays you down a, now if I remember right, when my video, when my YouTube channel got taken down the first time, these were, these two videos here were changed to the long version, if I remember right. But th this is introduction for reading the mystery explained right here. And then come all the way down here and you see this, this right here, 2022 Mystery Report Volume 3. If you click on that, you're going to be getting a free newsletter. If you're not a subscriber, you want to see how it works. You'll be looking at a uh, a newsletter very much like this one, except for number three. Okay, then up here, this is the Crystal Power that's on the YouTube channel for YouTube. That's where this video, and generally, the, the, the only YouTube channel that I have now is the Mystery Report channel. But whenever I make these videos, I upload them to Brideon, and to Rumble, and to BitChute too. And it's generally on a Sunday morning, just like this. And whatever you got, whenever I don't have to work till two or three o'clock doing regular Black Star report work, notifications and things like that, there's time. Then this is what I really, this is what I would really like to do. Then this Awakened Radio, 2012, I did a series, a radio series, 21 shows, radio shows, and there was a Black Star report included in that over at Awakened Radio. And John, who's a supporter since 2000, you know, way back, then uh, he downloaded each of those shows and he edited out the Black Star reports to make it just about the Mystery Explained, just about, and these were made in 2012, the Mystery Explained wasn't published. It was written in 2005, but it wasn't published till 2017. So this was, what, five years? This radio series was made five years before The Mystery Explained was published. Then this, my plan, you can see where the, look at the dates. January 2020. Then on Tuesdays, we were meeting in a chat room and People were asking me questions and I was answering them. This is, these are the video links. Oh boy, this is the YouTube channel. I sure hope these are uploaded to the new YouTube channel. Otherwise, these are all missing too. And then this is, uh, this Martin Harns Hark, Harkins. It's really a inspirational song that struck me out of all the songs. It's right up there with Amazing Grace by Elvis Presley for me. And so that's included right there. Okay, so for this volume five, then this is a common question that a lot of you guys are asking me. And Doug, you sent this on your phone, I do believe. And I had to uh, revise your question to a little bit, you know, use a few more terms. So thank you for writing. This is generally a mystery report. So you're a survival group member or a mystery report. I'm a survival group member or a Black Star Report newsletter subscriber, and you wrote to me about the end of the age. How do you know for certain that that the that the end of the age will occur in about 3,600 years? So this is a combination Black Star and Mystery Report question. This and in this newsletter right here, it's answered from the Mystery Report perspective. 
So the short answer, as Doug wrote back and he says, oh, you get the 3,600 years because that's a black star orbit cycle. And we don't know for certain. Many things we know about the black star. We know it came in the days of Moses. We know it came in the days of Noah. We know it's responsible for the great deluge from the ancient writings, from the Sumerian tablets, from we know the black star comes to the inner solar system and creates a pattern of destruction. It, but whether that's exactly, it's not exactly 3,600 years likely, it doesn't matter to me. You can extrapolate, go back to the, the days of Noah and then look at the days of Moses and say, oh, it's about this much, this amount of time. So that's the question. That's the focus. And so, I'll just say right at the top, here we go. So these are the, the diagrams used in this answer are the most commonly used diagrams for everybody that writes me questions to start off. Very important diagram in the mystery explained. So God's word is laid out in the same pattern as the tabernacle of Moses in the temple with three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. This looks really familiar, doesn't it? This is the image of a man right here. If you look down on the temple, on David's temple, you'll be looking at the image of a man that even has the arms, the sidewalks coming out and branching off into five fingers. So this is the spirit, the soul, and the body of God's word demonstrated in the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. The difference is that the veils are moved around until a time of reformation is referred to in Hebrews. So the word of God is laid out in this the same pattern of the tabernacle of Moses and the temple with three witnesses of spirit, Old Testament, water, kingdom, New Testament, and blood, Pauline epistles. See, there's two veils here. Those of the Old Testament, they can't see into the mystery that's revealed in the Pauline epistles. They cannot see it. That is very important to realize. Because if God, God had to hide everything pertaining to the mystery in himself. To be revealed after Christ was raised from the dead. If God would have revealed these things to the Old Testament prophets, the devil would have known. And the devil would not have crucified the Lord of glory in that case. But the devil didn't know. He didn't understand it. He understands it now, but now it's too late. So let me, uh, I'm going to stop this just for a second. I, I pulled up, well, maybe I don't need to stop it. Just put it right here. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8. I show some of you, if you're not aware, the uh, this is the BibleGateway.com. This is the one that I use, and this is this is the porting verses of of God's word that's going to say exactly what I'm we just said. For we do speak wisdom among those who mature, who are mature. A wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. The hidden, which God predestined before the ages, to our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So the devil had to be tricked. That's the reason that the gospel of the kingdom was sent to the world, was sent to Israel first, and then it was supposed to go to the whole world. And the devil crucified Jesus Christ, where he killed John the Baptist, had his head cut off, and then crucified the Lord of glory in order to stop the kingdom from coming in. That's what was prophesied in the Old Testament, the prophecy part that they could see, the kingdom that was supposed to come. So the devil says, I'll show them. I'll just kill them. That's what he did. What the devil didn't see is that we, through Paul's gospel, through the gospel of the grace of God, we were going to be, by obeying the gospel, that we were going to be baptized into Christ on the cross at Calvary. That when, so that when he died and went down into the earth, we died with him. Spent three days down in the earth with him. 
when God raised Christ from the dead, he raised us from the dead. When Christ raised Christ above, whenever God raised Christ above all the heavens, Ephesians 4, whenever he raised him above all the heavens and seated him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, he did the same for us. And we were 100% complete, finished product, done, forgiven by his grace, his mercy. Totally different doctrinal precepts teaching the word of the cross than the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ priest walking around. Well, let's head back over here. So that's what I'm saying right here is that that's what I'm saying right here somewhere that um in the Old Testament prophecy right here is unclothed. The prophecy is spoken but it's not fulfilled yet. The prophecy is going to be fulfilled over here in the day of the Lord. So many people believe right now that we are coming to the end of the age, and we're not. We are moving within this mystery period right here, and we're coming to this first veil, this veil right here. This veil right here separates the Old Testament from the New Testament. The New Testament is blood and water. Guess who came in blood and water? Jesus Christ. That's what it says in the most stomped on verses of the Old Testament. I mean, of the New Testament. And we get those right here. 1 John 5, 6 through 8. This is the one who... And, that, and there are many different translations or parts of this. Again, these are the most stomped on verses. There's four manuscripts that are corrupted, that were changed by the scribes. Because that's how they saw things, but that's does that's what appears in the Antiochian manuscripts, by the way. The manuscripts that came out of Antioch. The older manuscripts that make up the the Egyptian manuscripts, the Byzantine manuscripts, the ones that make up the critical text, they don't have they don't have, this is the way they read right here. For this is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with water and with blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And the three are into the one. I know that's not exactly what this says. This is a transliteration. But the Greek says, the three are into the one. That's exactly what it says. And they are. And that's what I'm showing you in this, that's what I'm showing you in this diagram. These three are into the one. And Jesus Christ, just like it says, came in water and in blood. Not in water only. See, this is the prophecy part. He came to fulfill prophecy. But he came to do much, much more than that. The prophecy part is the part that God allowed everybody to see. All these people in the Old Testament. The prophets. They can see over here. That's what this diagram here is about. The prophets. They can see into the day of the Lord very, very well. The day of the Lord hasn't even started yet. This timeline, you might want to stop this video and look at it. This is one diagram of 80 in the Mystery Explained. So Daniel, he's standing back here. Isaiah, standing back here. And he's looking. Daniel can tell you how the, the last 70 weeks go. He can tell you that the Messiah is going to be cut off. That's David. 100% for sure. David, Ezekiel 34, start at 22. David himself will feed them. David is the one, he's the earthly Messiah. And the Old Testament prophets can see it very well. They don't see anything in here. There has not been a prophecy fulfilled in almost 2,000 years. Not one. We're moving through a mystery period that the prophets can't see. If the prophets can't see in this period, it's a mystery time. The Old Testament prophets and the New Testament prophets, Peter, John, and James, they can't see it either. They can't see what Paul's talking about. Peter refers to it as the wisdom given him. That the untaught and unstable distort to their own destruction. That's what's happening right now. And it's going to happen during the day of the Lord too. 
Elijah is going to have everybody straightened out through this period, but whenever the devil incarnates as a man, whenever the Antichrist incarnate his son incarnates as a man, when they are beheading those who obey the gospel of the kingdom, they are going to mix together the water and the blood, just like the those blinded by denominationalism do right now today. The article that Karen sent me today was moved to this newsletter so I can highlight that point. I'm going to do that after I finish right here with Doug. Okay, so this is the pattern. There's a whole lot. In the Mystery Explained, the diagrams begin very simply with two overlapping circles, Venn diagrams. Spirit, blood, water, like I was showing you before. By the time you get to the end of the book, you start seeing extremely complicated diagrams. Because this is the earth part that's going on. This is the sun incarnated. This is the Lamb of the Lamb of God right here, Revelation 7, 7, 17 in the center of the throne. Those who are on the sea of glass are before the throne. So standing from this direction right here and looking, that's what you see. What you don't see are the angels. On the invisible sea, this is the sea of glass, there's an invisible sea behind it. We know it's there because of the types. What God does is he gives you two of the three witnesses, just like in the law, two or three witnesses, as it says, must testify. What God commonly does, he gives you either one or two of the witnesses. Very rarely does he give you all three, like in Matthew 28, 19. He gives you the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, spirit, blood, and water. Many times he gives you two and leaves one out. There's a mystery of Christ. There's a mystery of God. There's a third one, too. It's a water witness. We know it's there because of the types. And it's going to be the mystery of Adam. The first Adam, the last Adam, and God all have mysteries associated to them. Okay, so before we get, to, I skipped ahead a little bit because I wanted you to see the pattern. So this is, begins out really, really simple when you realize God's word is laid out in spirit, blood, and water. Just like you, spirit, soul, body. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Heaven, heaven, and earth. Then you can see that in the temple there are it, there are things that are there that have heavenly there are symbols of things that are in heaven down to the twelve golden pans the veils the laver of water the altar of incense and the ark of the covenant those three pieces those are three inner key parts to each of these these sections there's water baptism here. In, the, in this, the priests, they climbed up. It was a big, gigantic bowl of water, laver, with a ladder. And they climbed up into it and jumped over in the ladder, and that's how they were clean before they could go through this veil. Right here. Then when they get in here, then they have the altar of incense. So you have a brazen altar out here with a, for the sacrifice. And that smoke goes up, and you're cleaned, and then you can go through. There, there's a procedure under the law. To help us understand that this veil right here is the veil between heaven, between earth and heaven. There's a reason that women, even members of the Christ bo of Christ's body, pray with their heads covered, and men do not, because men are spirit witnesses, the image and glory of God. Women are the image of man. That means they're water witnesses. So this is where it can get confusing, because men are water witnesses in their relationship to God. God. Christ, man, just like God's infinite realm, heaven, and earth. But man, that's a water witness to God, is the spirit witness in his relationship to woman. That's why he's the image of glory of God and woman's the image of man. So he's in this position, the spirit witness. The woman is in the water witness, the helper position, just like the father, son, and the helper. Adam, seed, and Eve, the helper. God uses these terms throughout his word to help you to see the pattern. The only difference between you and me is that Lord God began showing me these patterns from my youth. And it took me a long time crawling and wanting to see it. Pleading with God, please Lord God, please Lord God, let me see it and see it. Reading the Bible every single day. Reading the Bible from cover to cover three times. And reading the New Testament more than a hundred times including a chapter every single night before bed for years and years and years and years. And then the pattern started opening up. It was 
1991, sitting in London on the eighth floor of a flat, writing to Dr. Clifford Denton whenever the, the passage that I just shared with you, 1 John 5, 6 through 8, and the different translations, the different versions from the different manuscripts. And I was in the middle of, a, of, a, of answering, in the middle of a sentence, and put my pen down and pleaded with God and pleaded with God. It was three days later. Did not write, because my practice was, there would be a stack of envelopes beside me conversing back and forth with scholars from around the world. That was my work. That's what I did. Because there was no such thing as the Internet. Things are much easier now to communicate with people around the world. That's what I was doing then. So I, was, I just remember writing with Dr. Clifford Denton from the Tishery Project. And in the middle of that sentence, God started showing me something. I'm not kidding you. I prayed on that for three days without writing a single word. And at the end of that, God showed me when I saw it, it was like the light shining around a bright door and the light coming through the keyhole that kept getting brighter and, brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until the door swung open and I was standing in a ball of light and could see it. It was very similar to my near-death experience back in 1989. It helped me to see a lot of these things too. But it didn't... So, the 1989 near-death experience was like pouring infinite into a shot glass. And it was so bright, it was searing, burning my eyes. Make you have to put your hands up. And I can't see that image today, but I can see the negative of it from the burn. And look around and see it. And it's pretty cool. So, a little background information. This is uh, the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. I'm... I'm trying to help you to see the pattern of what's going on. Scripture is laid out in the exact same pattern as this, these, according to these three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. And this is a little busy, a little busier than the diagram above. We're moving right now through this mystery time that contains the dispensation of God's grace. Paul is the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. The dispensation is not a period. It's not a time. It's not an epoch. Dispensation is an administration. It's a household. And members of that household live under certain house rules. So back here in the Old Testament, this is, there are, there are Jews, there were their Gentiles to start off, and then the Jews are taken out of the Gentiles. That's Abram and Abraham and all their children. And these you can see the spirit witnesses are back here. Blood witnesses here. The water witnesses are here. This is the time of the prophets. This is the time of the priests. This is the time of the kings, the rulers, the judges. That's us. The kings, the rulers, and the judges, the prophets, and the priests cannot see. Whenever they, finally, whenever they're in heaven, standing on that sea of glass with Peter, John, and James, they're going to go look up at the center of the throne. They're going to see the Lamb and the elders without realizing that's us. We're the blood witnesses. See, according to them, they believe that we've been there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So we were called by God through His grace to have those positions. Like these people were called to be prophets and these people were called to be priests. The, the period of the priest, that's coming up with the day of the Lord. We're moving through this period right now we are the ones that are going to judge the world and the angels. Before you gasp, that's what exactly what Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 and 3. And once we get to the end of the age and start the new age, Revelation 21, 1 plus, then we're going to start a new prophet period. These periods are, this is the way scripture is laid out. This is the timeline, the way it's laid out. This is God's plan, showing it to you according to the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Let's see, did I read this to you? Okay. God's word is laid out into a prophecy mystery timeline as shown above, which you can understand more when reading the mystery explained. In short, we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, where you see the first veil. That's right here. We're approaching that veil right now. I'll make reference to it, even my Black Star reports.
We're coming up to a veil. As we approach this veil, there's a compression factor. It's like we're moving toward a sheet of glass at high speed. There's, and it's compressing like the sound of a locomotive. Whenever it's coming towards you, that sound is being compressed, 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 getting louder and louder and louder and louder. As soon as it passes you, then those, those waves begin separating, getting further and further and further apart. Everything's compressing right now. I don't know if you know, can feel it. I can. But things are picking up in velocity and intensity. That veil is getting closer and closer and closer. As soon as we pass through that veil, everything changes in the blink of an eye. And these sayings that I'm giving, I'm, sh I'm sharing with you, everything's going to make perfect sense for everybody on the other side of that veil. Not with the same uh, wisdom. Some are babes. Some are coming along. And some, Lord God has put his hand on our shoulder and said, it's time for you to see this part. Time for you to see this part. Time for you to see this part. Look and under, look up the word mysterion, mystery to, and bask in its true meaning. That's not what the English word says. Things withheld and then revealed. There's a time that God chooses. He chose for Paul to see it. He chose a time for Paul to reveal it in the Holy Scriptures. And the same applies to you. God chooses the time that you're going to see the differences between the two Gospels, the two churches, the four baptisms, the differences between my Father who art in heaven and the Almighty. The difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. There are differences, vast differences. Some people use the terms interchangeably because they don't know. Semantics kills conversation. It kills the opportunity for faith, knowledge, and wisdom. Once you see these things properly, then the seeds can grow. You have to prepare the soil first. That's what I'm trying to do with the mystery explained. Okay. Um, the black star came in the days of Noah and Moses and is coming now for the prophet of Acts 3. Verses 19 through 26. That's Elijah. The last two verses of the Old Testament say that he's coming. He's going to restore the hearts of the fathers to children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. The hearts of the fathers to children is returning their hearts to innocence. Returning the hearts of the children to their fathers is pointing them in the direction of immortality. There, our fathers, long ago, lived to be thousands of years old. That's coming again. Elijah's going to show them. Imagine what happens when death and the devil and all of his minions are chained. And the animals run around and play together. They don't eat each other anymore. That's the period that we're about to go through. According to the Old Testament, according to what I can see. At the end of the age, everything's going to revert again. That's about, that's after 3,000 years of good. Then the devil's finally going to incarnate on the earth and everything goes downhill from there. People today believe that they can't see this veil. They think that we're living in the time of prophecy and we're not. There are similarities between the soul part, the mystery being revealed that's happening right now, and prophecy being fulfilled, the water witness and the blood witness. So, in other words, your soul overshadows your body. But it's not the same thing. You can take, you can look at prophecy and see what's happening in the soul period. There are similarities. You know, World War III is trying to start just like at the end of the age. And they're coming out with this, uh, this uh, ID, this Vax ID, this passport, and all that stuff. That's going to happen at the end of the age. It's going to be far, far worse. There's, the world is going to be filled with maybe a hundred billion people at the end of the age. And I know what you're thinking. That's impossible. That would seem impossible, except people are going to be living to be more than a thousand years old. And there's going to be uh, the devil and death are chained up for a while. My apologies for the interruption. Puppies are being puppies. I had to put them outside. So you know, I, I lost my train. The um. In short, we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Where you see the first veil and um, separating the 20 uh, 2000 year mystery time and the coming day of the Lord shaded in blue Star, the black star came in the days of Noah and Moses and is coming now for the prophet of Acts 3 he's coming to restore all things he obviously hasn't come yet he hasn't restored all things yet 
All right. All the words of the prophet must be fulfilled. And I can go read that to you if you want, Acts 13. I look at my time after 35 minutes. I want to cover some of the other things besides this report. The, uh, the black star will cause the destruction that comes suddenly in 1 Thessalonians 5. Start at verse 1. To start the day of the Lord and will fulfill Matthew 24 and Revelation, etc. at the end of the age on the next black star orbit cycle in about 3600 years. That's the common mistake people make. They think Matthew 24 is happening now. They think Revelation is happening now. It is not. It's going to happen back here at the end of the age. That hasn't even started yet. David has a set on the throne. David has to feed the people. The Messiah has got to be there, the earthly Messiah, and then he has to be cut off. Israel's kingdom has to go from, it's stretched across from the Nile River to the River Euphrates. That hasn't happened yet. There's so much of prophecy that hasn't even started to be fulfilled yet. Israel is still by the Jordan River. That's a veil that opens up to the, that's a veil that it, um, Elijah is going to open. And Israel, once Israel is raised, the bones are going to be raised by the millions. They're going to walk into the promised land right across the Jordan River that Elijah is going to cause to part. He can take his mantle off, off his shoulder and slap it down on the ground and the Water's going to heap up on both sides, and Israel's going to walk right across. That's going to happen. That's going to, that's how the day of the Lord's going to begin. They're all going to obey the gospel of the kingdom. They're going to be baptized in water and in the name of Christ and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Laying on of hands, poof. They're going to be able to raise the dead. None of that has happened yet. That's going to happen over in this period right here. Then, um, so the black star comes to start the day of the Lord here and end the day of the Lord here. The, the thing that escapes people's notice, Second Peter chapter 3, started in, in, in verse 8. Do not let it escape your notice that to the day, to the Lord, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. But they want to make it the day of the Lord an event rather than a period that is a time and an epoch. And it's going to be 3,600 years. This phrase, thousand years, is only used in two books of the Bible, Second Peter and Revelation. And it means so long as it takes to fulfill all things. To so stand with the prophets on the left to realize that they see very little into the coming day of the Lord. They see nothing inside this 2,000 year mystery time. The prophets see how prophecy is fulfilled, but they see nothing about how the mystery is revealed. This is one of the most profound statements right here that you're going to hear in life the prophets see how prophecy is fulfilled they don't see anything about how the mystery is revealed that's what was given to the apostle paul that's distinct and separate that's why many people think that paul is a heretic because he doesn't say the same thing as what the old testament says he doesn't say the same thing as what peter john and james say he says something that's quite the opposite in many cases because Kingdom doctrine for Peter, John, and James and the kingdom bride is almost the antithesis, the exact opposite of what Paul is teaching. Salvation by God's grace through faith apart from works? Come on. That doesn't appear anywhere in the Bible other than in the doctrine to Christians, those for whom Christ died. That's because God does the work of our salvation. But uh, those who obey the gospel of the kingdom, they must, they must endure to the end to be saved. When we are sealed, our lives are sealed with Christ in God. Colossians 3, start at verse 1. This is the warning that I was telling you about. Let's see. Those blinded by denominationalism, the mystery of iniquity, mix the water, kingdom, and blood, grace, ministries of Jesus Christ together without knowing the difference. That is so commonplace. It is, that is the rule. Those who see the difference are the exception to the rule. Which leads them and their deluded followers to utter destruction. I see that happening all around us. Practically everybody that Mike Adams at Brighton, the health ranger, practically every single person that he interviews on these Bible topics are mixing their water and their blood, don't know the difference. Mike Adams and his followers are being led down the road to utter destruction. And 
I tell them, I tell them, I tell them, I'm warning them just like in the days of Noah, but they keep running headlong into destruction anyway. And Because once they're deluded, that deluding influence is not of the devil. That deluding influence is sent by God Almighty Himself. And once God sends His deluding influence and He deludes you, you're done. So got somebody with the truth comes up and says, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not going to work. Because they're deluded by the deluding influence sent by God Himself. And we are going to become their heretics. And that's what happens. See Peter's warning in Second Peter 3, 14 through 16, concerning the wisdom given him. I'm going to stop, no matter how much time is left or not, and just show you. Many people that 3, 14 through 16. But let's read it. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, remember Peter is writing to water witness kingdom priests, kingdom disciples that obey the gospel of the kingdom. Be diligent to be found spotless and blameless by him in peace and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Just as also our brother, our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you in all of his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which there are some things that are hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. Peter's saying it's hard to understand, and he's got the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because kingdom doctrine is what he's an expert at. Grace doctrine, the gospel to the Gentiles, that's what Galatians 2 is all about. The, the uh, meeting in Jerusalem, Acts 15, there are two different dispensations there, two different groups. Paul, Barnabas, and Titus. They are preaching to the Gentiles the gospel of the grace of God, Peter, John, and James. They are preaching the gospel of the kingdom to kingdom Jews only. Until, I know Acts 10, then Peter is sent to Cornelius. But that is Gentiles being added to the kingdom bride. They had to be circumcised in order to obey the law. We, members of Christ's body, are not circumcised. It's not what's done to the skin. It's what's done in our hearts. And it's all by God's grace through faith apart from works. So that's what he's saying to the Galatians. If you're going to have circumcision, then God's grace and, and mercy and the gospel of, of the grace of God and all that, has it's going to be no benefit to you. Because you're trying to add a work to something that is God's trying to give to you as a free gift. Add a work to it, and you spoil the whole thing. That's what the devil does, is give people a heavenly way to go straight to hell with these, like Billy Graham. And the sinner's prayer. And the, the sinner's prayer is the most commonly preached false gospel on the planet. They say, and Paul Bagley and the rest of them, this is the pattern, this is what they do. Get mad at me if you want to. They say, just pray this prayer with me. Or just go to my website. Just go over here and read this prayer with me. And welcome Jesus Christ into your heart and you will be saved. That's a work added to. That's a counterfeit. That's what the, how the devil uses these dupes, these blind, the people that are blinded by denominationalism, to give people a heavenly way to go straight into the lake of fire. That's what's happening. They're blinded by that deluding influence. And once they are baptized into the body of the Antichrist, see, that's what's happening. We're baptized in the body of Christ to participate in his death, burial, and resurrection. Those that obey these false gospels, those that reject our gospel, they are baptized in the body of the Antichrist. And they participate in his death in the lake of fire. And since they have immortal bodies, they cannot die. They suffer that wrath and condemnation to the ages of the ages, to the end. And there's nothing that we can do to stop them, I mean, to stop that from happening. Okay, let's head back over here. There's more that I want to cover. And um, let's see. So those that are blinded, that the, the the people that I'm talking about, they are preaching these false gospels. They're already in the lake of fire. So we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right now. Finished product. Let me pull this up. The thing to realize is for for every precept of doctrine, teaching grace doctrine, 
the mystery of Christ. There is an antithesis doctrine teaching the mystery of iniquity. So the scriptures that you're looking at, Pauline doctrine, the verses, this is from God's living word that is multidimensional. It's teaching more than one thing at a time. It's teaching to the babes. It's teaching to the wisdom, to the wise, to the mature at the same time. It's teaching grace doctrine and the antithesis at the same time. Understanding one, God doesn't give you the whole picture on any of it, but he allows you to see the whole picture because you can extrapolate from what he's giving you to the unseen. This is, what he's, this is what's true for us, the members of Christ's body, who have active participants in, God, in, in God's um, sacrifice that he made for us with his son, the death, burial, and resurrection. This is us. The antithesis is true for those who reject our gospel and those who obey false gospels. But God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the boundless riches of his grace and kindness toward us. I'll stop here just for a second. The difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus can be seen right here if you open up your eyes. God raised us up with him. Who's him here? God raised us up with him, Jesus Christ, the Son of God who died on the cross for us, who went into the earth and he raised from the dead. But where is Jesus Christ? In us. And seated us with him. Who's this him right here? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He raised him up and he seated him in the heavenly places where? In Christ Jesus. If this is Jesus Christ, he's seeing him in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus cannot be the same thing. They're both mentioned right here together in the same passage, in the same verse. One cannot be equal. This Jesus Christ is seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the incarnation of God's word who is heaven. The spirit Witness is my Father who art in heaven. The blood witness part is the Son. The water witness part is the Holy Spirit. It's an entire realm. Heaven made into three. Just like earth of Genesis 1. The heaven and the earth. God created the heaven and the earth. That earth was divided into the heavens, heaven and earth. If you look in the Bible, you'll see there's a heaven in Genesis 1.8. That's between the waters. There's also a heaven in Genesis 1.1. They are not the same heaven. What is it? First Kings chapter 8. Verse 26. You want to look at it? 1 Kings 8, 26 through 27. Let's see if I'm off here. This is what he says. Now then, God of Israel, let your words please be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house I have built. How many people have read this? How many ministers have read this to you? Both heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, and they don't know the difference. The heaven, behold heaven right there. Heaven is heaven of Genesis 1.8. The highest heaven right there is heaven of Genesis 1.1. There's a difference. And I show you the difference in all the diagrams. And it's real easy to see once you use the color-coded diagrams to be able to see what's going on here. Okay, back over here. Um, those blinded already are seated. So we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Those baptized in the Antichrist have the dueling influence. They are already burning in the lake of fire. They don't even know it yet. So whenever we pass through this veil, snap in the blink of an eye, there's going to be a rapture of the righteous that are in Christ Jesus, and there's going to be a rapture of the unrighteous. They're going, they're already in the lake of fire. We're already seated in those heavenly places. We're already there. Everything's going to change. Snap, just like that. We're going to put on immortality. Those that are in the lake of fire are going to put on immortality too. But they're going to wish that they could die and they can't. They're going to suffer wrath. They are screaming so loud. For half of the coming age, we can't even visit them because they are in such torment. Near the end of the age, they start getting accustomed to what's going on. And by then, the sons of God become complacent. And the Lord God says, you know, we start messing up. And the Lord God says, hold on a second. You need to go visit those in the lake of fire. 
that has no power over us, but we go there and we see those who tormented us, who killed us, and we see God's wrath seared into their foreheads, his condemnation upon them, and they stand in their nakedness. And we go, it's the day of visitation, is what it's called. And we go and visit with them, and by the time we come back, we're like calves, and right, let the spring calf let out of the stall. He's been waiting and waiting and trying to grow up enough to go out and play with the rest of the cows. I've seen it personally. I've heard the clicking of their heels, and that's how the sons of God are. Whenever they're, because they're running, the, they're, they're jumping and they're so happy, the spring calf, because he's if you know if you put the spring calf out there with him when he's first born, he's going to get stomped on. So he has to be kept separate. But what you do, you have your stall set so he can see them, but he can't be with them. That's the way that that it is. So then I mentioned to Doug, you might want to get yourself a 2022 mystery port to the program subscription, and that's going to give you access to all the mystery ports. You can go back in time, the breadcrumb trail. God's hidden wisdom, it's right there. Okay, then, Elizabeth, you wrote, and you received your copy of the um, of the Mystery Explained, and will continue to be treasured. Your gifted clarity in teaching the truth is presenting, by presenting the spiritual seeds and fruits from your decades of study, um, and inspired growth is evident. It says, buying the Kindle version earlier this year, I listened to, and reading the Mystery Report newsletters, my passion for Scripture has rekindled. It is delightful to grow and explore Bible, the Bible in uh, from the perspective of the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Almost like a paradigm shift, which it is. The, uh, the reason that the Mystery Explained finally was published is because people were writing to me saying that they had printed out the, the PDF and had bound it themselves to have their own book. And then that really inspired me one day. And decided to had to go through the editing process. It was like having a baby. And appreciate the help, you guys, you ladies, that helped me. And they're doing the proofreading and things like that. So then my heart leaps when receiving the good news that God has chosen another member of Christ's body to see his wisdom hidden very much in plain sight. Seeing God's wisdom using his three witnesses of spirit, uh, his three witnesses changes everything. And God will continue to open doors for you. And will open many more doors when you help others. That's the key. You're going to see so many things through your own study. But God's going to open way more doors whenever you begin to help others to see the same thing. And there's going to be persecution and things involved. At first, they're going to think you're out of your freaking mind. What in the world are you talking about here? Spirit, blood, and water and all that. When they start seeing it, though, the persecution stops. And then they start seeing it and they get that. Just like you, Elizabeth, they start like a little kid with a new toy. That's the way I was whenever I'm right after seeing it, that door slammed open and I finished that sentence right into Dr. Clifford Denton. Then that was exciting. I could still feel the excitement that was in me, knowing that I was on a path that was going to take me to the truth. I love the truth and God's word so much that I just can't stand it. And that's been on that journey ever since. Then uh, Gary writes, uh, this is my Gary, my very good friend Gary. He's the fellow that comes over and helps me. And uh, he relocated here and his family here. So the things come from Gary's a little more advanced. Gary's asked me more questions and received more answers than anybody else walking on the planet. He's right up there. David is, you know, in there. David's been doing it longer. David's been, uh, Gary's been more intense about it. With Every time he comes over, it's questions, questions. And I just love our discourse going back and forth. And um, so some of the things you hear from Gary are going to be a little more uh, advanced. So reading the mystery explained the true nature of Adam and the garden. I'm stumbling over where Isaiah said that he was pierced for our transgressions, scourging, scourges for our healing. Genesis doesn't say much about Adam after he was kicked out of the garden. So I'm finding nothing where it talks about Adam's treatment, good or bad. Also, as far as I understand, the six-day peoples were the only ones there to mistreat him unless his kids mistreated him later in his 930 years lifespan most of verses 1 through 7 could be applied to the first adam but i'm not connecting um no i'm not connecting it still looks like isaiah prophet um prophetic verses for jesus christ to me could it be 
referring to Adam's treatment in the infinite realm? If so, how could anybody know? Can't tell from the scriptures as far as I can. Can you shed any light on this? I say, thank you for writing. Say three times on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. Many of you can benefit by saying this. Christ gives the water and the blood part. Earth is the water part. Heaven is the blood blood part. Water and blood. He came in water and blood. He doesn't give the spirit part. Deliberately. On earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. When you can say that fluently and see and connect the dots between spirit, blood, and water, everything's going to make way more sense. So as we are doing things already done, Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 11. And I mention that a lot of times. So we, it's probably a good idea that we go there quickly. What has been is what will be. And what has been done is what will be done. So there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one may say, see this? It is new. It has existed. It has already existed for ages which were before us. There is no remembrance of the earlier things and of the later things as well, which will occur. There will be no remembrance of them among those who will come later still. So here's the deal in a nutshell. And I should probably pull up another diagram. Begin at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is the code. That is the cipher. That is the key to unlocking the secrets of God. Old Testament, Paul's epistles, grace, New Testament, kingdom, New Testament. 39 books, 13 books, 13 books. This veil right here is the book of Acts. This veil right here is the mystery of Adam. The last two verses of the Old Testament, Elijah, coming to restore all things. It's the hearts of the fathers to children. That's John the Baptist who stepped through the veil. John the Baptist is just one skin of our father Adam. He's the prophet, the priest, of the king of the earth. I know, very difficult to see. People don't see this second veil either. They don't realize that 65 books of the Old Testament, I mean of the Bible, they are either spirit witnesses, blood witnesses, or water witnesses, all of them, all 65. They testify according to the number of the steward, 39, 13, and 13. This book of Acts is the only book in the Bible that has attributes of blood and water. It starts off with the water, Peter, John, and James. The day of Pentecost, it ends with the Apostle Paul. Two different dispensations separated by this veil. Do you see the veil? If you don't see the veil, if you're mixing water and blood together, the veil is broken inside of you, making you a son of iniquity. Sons of God have the veils intact on the inside. So, in reference to what I'm showing you here, these this is uh, these things have already been done. The things that we're doing here on the earth have already been done before, twice. Heaven, this is where Michael the Archangel and the dragon are fighting. This is an almost infinite realm that contains this universe. Everything that's being done in heaven has been done already here. The dragon, here, is Satan. Satan is an infinite realm host. Singularity host like God, like the Word. Singularity. Here, he's the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Here, he's the devil, the son of, of destruction, and the false prophet. So everything that's happening here happened here. Everything that happened here happened in the infinite realm. Three witnesses becoming one and the same thing. So here, Satan was thrown out. He was thrown down into heaven. In heaven, he's fighting with Michael the Archangel. He's got his head cut off, the dragon. His tail is swooping across the sky. The, the stars that are falling down are going into the heavenly authorities of this earth and on the earth. That's, that's where Hillary and Obama and the bad guys, House of Rothschild, the Bilderbergs, the Trilateral Commission, all those bad guys, that's where they come from, from here, down to here. We've already done all this before. We all know each other. We're all members of one another. Here, on earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. Once you realize that, you're going to realize we're doing things that's already done. The choices that were made were made here. This is the, the uh, 
cause realm. This is the effect realm. And we're doing things just like I just read to you. Already done. And there's nothing new here. The people that are around us that are going to deceive us and trick us, they are destroying themselves. They just don't know it yet. God's using their own craftiness to trick them and to send them to the lake of fire. And we're going to visit them in the lake of fire for all the ages to come. And it's going to come out as, as the ages go on and on and on and on of how they deceived us here. How, that, how they were part of the satanic rebellion. Because what's, what Hillary and Obama and all of them are doing is just a little pinprick compared to what they've really done to us. We don't even know yet. We're not going to know at the end of this age. In the next age, it's going to be revealed throughout time. Because what happened here is infinite to infinite realm hosts. That's why I say, bad guys, just let them, just let them do their thing. They're hanging themselves. They don't even know it. They think that they have power over us. They don't have any power. None. Any power they have is from far beyond. I just showed you where it came from. Where God and his word are the same thing. Everything is fixed here. Everything is fixed. And they can't change it. They're powerless. They think they have all the power. House of Rothschild. They're underground arc cities. AI. They have, every, all, they have the biological weapon. They don't have anything. They're burning in the lake of fire already. And that fire, that burning look of judgment, it's in their eyes already. Because deep, deep down inside them, they know it. This is out on the outer flesh part. They don't know it yet. But they will. Okay. So everything that we do in this universe, to the ages of... To, to the age of the ages, I've got this backwards, ages of the ages, has been done in heaven already and has been done in God's infinite realm. We read and interpret the truth of God's living word in this way, walking by faith and then knowledge and then wisdom. Satan deceived the sons of God in God's infinite realm to conspire together and murder Adam. God's sons in the infinite realm will look upon Adam restored and weep mightily over their brother that they collectively beat, misused, persecuted, and pierced. You see, it's impossible for the gods of God's infinite realm to conspire and pierce God's word. It's impossible. God and his word are one. They're always going to be one. God asked his word to go incarnate as heaven. That's the last Adam. That's who's incarnate as the Lamb of God in heaven. That's the Lamb of God incarnate as Jesus Christ. God's word in the infinite realm cannot be broken. It's one with God. Jesus Christ doesn't need any redemption. Adam does. That's why it's the first and last Adam. Heaven and earth are Adam. All the members of the body are Adam. One's first, one's last. Eventually they become one and the same thing. So whenever heaven and earth walk together as Adam and Christ, just like John the Baptist and Christ walking together as Adam and Christ, go back to the garden. The Lord God's in the garden. That's the Lamb of God. He has formed Adam. They walk together. They're, as the entire realm of the earth and the members of Adam's body, and as the t entire realm of heaven as the members of Christ's body, they're going to walk together side by side and walk through that second veil into the infinite realm. And who do you think is going to pop out on the other side? It's going to be Adam, restored in God's infinite realm. He is the lamb created because of the satanic rebellion. He's the one. He is the Redeemer. He is the Savior that God created because He created Satan. Yet God had to keep a secret. He created Satan. He was the highest, mightiest cherub, the anointed cherub that covers. He was the big chicken in the chicken house over there until the day iniquity was found in him. Once that happened, the standard rebellion happened, God had the need to create a Savior. That's when He made Adam. But because of God's might, when he creates something in the infinite realm, it becomes instantly infinite. It has a past, present, and a future. God does the same thing with us when we obey the gospel. In heaven, we're seated in Christ Jesus with a past, present, and a future. Just like we were there whenever he said in the beginning, God created the heaven. We're there from the beginning by Almighty, by his power because of the power of the gospel. Romans 1, 16 and 17. Power of the gospel. Not because God's infinite and powerful and all that. It's the power of the gospel. God's word, and then his promises that he makes to us through his word, that makes all that possible. 
when you extrapolate the truth of how what predestination really is, and it's based on God's power in the gospel, then you can begin to extrapolate when you get mature how that works in God's infinite realm. Then you're going to realize Isaiah 53 is written about Adam in the infinite realm. And you say, well, how do we know? Ecclesiastes. What's happening has already happened. What do you think? Satan killed God's word in God's infinite realm? That is impossible. God cannot be separated from his word. They're one and the same thing in the infinite realm. These things are replaying to show the conflict took place between Satan and the destruction of the Savior that God created for that purpose. And that's what Adam is. The, um, the mystery of Adam is among the greatest things to be known in the Bible. It's invisible, just like that second veil. So that's the answer, if you're following Isaiah 53, is about Adam and God's infinite realm. Christ Jesus sacrificed into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lamb of God in heaven, Jesus Christ incarnate on the earth, raised up in glory at the right hand of God, and Adam in Genesis 2-7, sacrificed, Eve, and seed removed. See that Eve and seed? That's blood. That's blood and water. I didn't put the parentheses behind here. Or the brackets. Removed from his side, that's the water and the blood. Adam incarnating as kings over the six-day people. Go into Halley's Bible Handbook. And it's just above page 100, depending on your version. It's going to talk about kings. There's a list of 12 of them there. The final one, he ruled for 48,000 years. To give you an idea how many thousands of years people can live. Those are incarnations of Adam and Eve, back and forth, standing before the throne of the Almighty in heaven, constantly as his candlesticks, as olive trees that are on the earth. Zechariah 4, start at verse 11. Who are these? Who are these olive trees? They're the two that testify before the God of the Lord of the earth. They're there right now. They're standing there. They incarnate on the earth. They incarnated on the earth as, as um, Eve incarnated as Noah, and as Moses, and as Bathsheba. And as Sarah, Adam incarnated as Joshua, incarnated as Abraham, as, as, and as John the Baptist. That's why Jesus Christ says that there's none among, the greatest born among women is not Jesus Christ. He, he didn't say that, did he? The greatest born of women is John the Baptist because he is another skin, like Elijah and Joshua and Abraham, for our father Adam. He and Eve are the two begottens. Like, there's a one begotten of heaven, one, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. There are two begottens of the earth, and that's Adam and Eve. So you'll see in the commentary here that the, the, uh, the David from Ezekiel 34 that I mentioned earlier, that's going to be the same thing. That's another skin. And the two witnesses that come in Revelation, a lot of people think that's Elijah and Moses. You know why? Because they are. But Elijah and Moses are skins for Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve must come to testify for their disobedient children. So the Messiah is cut off in, what is it, week 64 of the 70. They are not incarnate on the earth for a brief time, and then they incarnate again together as the two witnesses at the end. And once you realize what's going on here with them being Adam and Sarah, they're being David and Bathsheba, then you're going to see the pattern to realize all of these skins are testifying for Adam in God's infinite realm. And that's how we know. So it's not just what's written in God's word. It's what we extrapolate by seeing the truth through the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. So this is a four-dimensional thing. It includes time, includes space, includes God's word, the testimony of all the witnesses testifying simultaneously together. And I'm going to leave the rest of this for what you can stop and read and for newsletter subscribers. I hope you will subscribe to the mystery program. It's great, great, great stuff once you can see it. If you can take these materials and help others, your reward in heaven is going to be enormous. We have a chance, those on the base of the pyramid here that are born at the, last, the end of this mystery time, to go up the mountain of God. If you take the time and digest these things in God and pray on your hands and knees like I did that God will show open up doors for you and then help others to see it 
you can be on your way up toward the top of the it's a pyramid in heaven and it's a mountain of God in the infinite realm and some of us can see them very clearly and that's why it's really really important to me I have for example I keep my nano silver my sodium borate in my system I'm in a safe zone here in Northwest Arkansas even though I could be raptured from anywhere but it's a very important to me to be here at the end whenever that we pass through that veil lots and lots of people are about to perish and that's gonna make you like everybody else you remember Christ's body great but you're gonna be like all the other members of Christ's body that perished before us that are sleep in Christ and that are gonna be raised at the sound of the trumpet but the small number there's going to be a number of us that are that do not see death we're going to be raptured and we're going to stand in glory and without seeing death and we're going to have an emblem on our chest plate that is going to give us great rewards because we never saw death like guess who Elijah and the members of Christ's body are going to be separated into there's one body right but we're going to be separated looking at ourselves by the emblems that we have, the symbols that we have on our chest plate that give uh, gives us the ability to go in certain places. And those who have the, the emblem of Elijah are going to be special. And I want to be there for that. And once you realize that we're on a competition and that, that the places we go in heaven depends on our rewards, then you're going to want to be there too. So there's, that's, what, that's one of the things that shape, that shape me. Okay, as I continue on the amazing journey of the three witnesses, this is from Joseph. God bless you, Joseph. He's coming along and he's seeing it, like Elizabeth. He might. He, I think Eliz, uh, Joseph, you're a little further along. So I came across this to create in himself one new man from the two. Ephesians two fifteen. For some reason, this blew my mind this morning. So is this referring to Trinity sets? So triune mystery sets are everywhere. Oh, my apologies. I had to calm. Something happening outside here. The, um, the trying try mystery sets are everywhere, and things happen on earth as in heaven and in God's infinite realm. You can see why this, this question answer was below the one that was above. Once you see that pattern, things become much easier. The Gentile members of Christ's body are being addressed and told that they are joined together with their circumcised counterparts into one body that is a new man. That new heavenly man is composed of rulers, kings, and judges as a blood, um, blood witness in relationship to the Jews and Gentiles called to obey the gospel of the kingdom, to join Peter, John, and James, as kingdom of priests, bride of Christ. Therefore, these Ephesians are blood witnesses in relation to the kingdom bride, but the men in the assembly are still spirit witnesses in their relationship to their wives. Then, men are still water witnesses in relation to their angelic super halves, dwelling in the heavens, above heaven and the earth. Most people don't realize that for every person that's walking around this earth, there's an angelic super half. So that angelic super half is like the man, the spirit witness. The, the man or the woman walking around the earth is the water witness, counterpart, the helper. There are two veils that stand between that angel and you. The flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, but neither can the angels. The angels from the heavens, they need their water witness counterpart. So when you take the spirit witness and the water witness, put the man, put the woman back inside the man, put the man back inside the angel, that becomes the living soul. So it's not just that men and women go to heaven. There's no such thing as men or women in heaven. The woman came out of Adam, the woman came out of the man, and then the man goes back inside the angel, and that is what becomes a living soul on the other side. So there's, let's put it this way, there's a lot more hosts running around in the universe right now than there's going to be when everything becomes one. In the perfect ages of Genesis 1-1, there weren't near as many hosts, because the men and the women and the angels there are three witnesses testifying for a singularity on the other side of that. So which veil is it? The uh, spirit blood, the blood water, and you try to help me please. So regarding Gentiles and Israel, I believe that's the subject of your query. 
the Gentiles represent the spirit witness coming first, from which Israel was taken from the Gentiles' side, like Eve helper taken from Adam's side, and also like the Holy Spirit taken out of the side of the Word, also. While there is a distinction in the earth, there is no such thing as male or female or Jew or Gentile in heaven, which means there's no veil, first or second, standing between them. The two groups are literally made new as new creatures. Um, this is, when you understand that we're created new, that we're new creatures, then perhaps you can understand that we cannot be born again. Whenever you hear somebody saying, going on about how they're born again, born again, oh, we're born again, that means they, they don't understand the difference. They, they're mixing the water and the blood together. The born again doctrine comes from Christ and Nicodemus and John 3. John 3, Christ hasn't died for anybody. That should tell you right away that that's kingdom doctrine. And the anathen, which is again there, the translation, that is from above. That same term is used in that chapter two other times it is translated above as above in other cases. This born again thing is a, is, is a carryover from the old King James. And one of you guys sent me a question on that. that I'm, that's going to be, I'm not sure if it's in this newsletter or the next one. That uh, help you to understand the differences in the, the different translations and the critical texts and the, the received texts and the Byzantine manuscripts and all that. That was all understood early, early on in my ministry. So the, the, uh, by contrast, women are told to pray with their heads covered because of the angels, because the women are water witnesses like priests. So I'm kind of hurrying here and I really don't want to. The, um, the covering represents the first veil standing between the earth and heaven. Why? Because there is a distinction between angels, men, and women on the earth. So Paul is teaching that, but he's not filling in all the blanks for you. So he mentions the angels, they're spirit witnesses. He mentions the women and the men, but he's not connecting all the dots for you. The thing to realize is that Paul is addressing all these people in person, like I'm addressing you in this video. So... All of my words that I'm giving you are not in the written part. Some of the background is filled in. So those that were receiving Paul's letters, the Thessalonians and the Corinthians, the Galatians, the Romans, they received physical, in-person commentary from the Apostle Paul and other letters. The, the book of Romans is, for if you're a brand new member of Christ's body, the book of Romans is likely, it should be your most important book. Paul felt like as Rome was Rome was it. Rome was was the center of civilization. That's who occupied the entire region. That's who occupied Israel. And so Paul felt like if he could win Rome, he could win the whole world. And that's why you see a lot of effort put into the book of Romans. He starts right off with the homosexuality and things like that. And right there in Romans one. Okay, then troubled. This is uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Listen to your podcast. I'm going to leave this one for you guys. I mean, that's it's it's kind of short. It's it's from Gary, and then this is the one that I answered this morning that I want to speak on just a little bit. A free book supporting the Trinity as the center of the universe, and you would think that th I would be all for this, but I'm not. And here is the document that's right here, and it's uh, 166 pages. And this guy's using a lot of language. A lot, a lot, a lot. And so I took just this part right here and gave you my reply right here to help you to see the big picture of what's really going on here. So the uh this is what he writes. It is a don't have a yeah, this is the part this is the part that he writes. Thank you for writing. The PDF has been downloaded. Please forgive, but the writer is ignorant of even the simplest of doctrines, and blinded by the living influence forcing him to believe what is false. Absolute threeness. This is the data analyzed. I believe it's from page four, 14. It is apparently an absolute threeness. If you're so sure about something, you wouldn't write apparently, would you? Everything in the, bio, the biblical description the three called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit means definitely and absolutely no more 
and no less than three persons in the Godhead. So we have one part here saying this apparently, and then the other part that says absolutely and definitely. The thing is, the conclusion here is dead wrong. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of Matthew 28:19 are the three witnesses of the Word. God's three witnesses. Let me pull these up for you. To show it to you. Matthew 28:19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three witnesses. Spirit, blood, and water. There they are. Thing is, that's not the three witnesses of the Godhead. That's three witnesses of the Son of God. The Word. That's who my Father who art in heaven. When he said, talks about my Father who art in heaven, he's talking about the spirit witness of the Word. When he talks about my God and Father, he's talking about the Almighty that sent him to die for our sins. Those three witnesses are listed in Revelation 1 8. Most people can't see this tree for the forest. I am Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who was, who is, and who is to come. God to come is the spirit witness, the lion of that tabernacle. God who is, is the eagle. He is the blood witness. He sees all things, all everywhere in the universe right now. God to come, his prophet, sees things in the future. God who was, his priest, sees things in the past. This is how the Almighty must interact with us because we are three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Soul, spirit, soul, body. In the heavens, heaven, and earth, the universe is broken. He can't testify to us as a singularity. He must speak to us through his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. That's just the way it is. But what people do is, is they take Jesus Christ, the Word, and they transform him to the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the equal God, which makes the Son of God into an idol and pushes the Almighty right out of the picture. Are you guys doing that? So if you're around me and you start talking about God, the, the, my Father who art in heaven as being God, then I'm going to have to stop you because God showed me the difference. I know my Father who art in heaven. And I know the Almighty, and they're two different people. If you want to say they're people, hosts, whatever you want to call them. The Holy Spirit, completely different than God who was, completely different from the Almighty. He testifies for the Word. He's the helper. He's the, he's the helper that the Son of God, the Word incarnate, sent. The Holy Spirit first went with John the Baptist. There's a thread of the Holy Spirit. Should If I could, I'd write a book about that if there were time. That extends all the way from Genesis 1-2, the Spirit that hovered over the surface of the waters. All the way to Revelation, what is it, 22-17. The bride and the Spirit say, come. There's a thread that is unbroken all the way through the scriptures of the Holy Spirit. Incarnate as Melchizedek. Incarnate over the mercy seat between the wings of the cherubim in the Holy of Holies. It went with Zacharias, the father of, of uh, John the Baptist. It went to, from him to Elizabeth's womb. John Baptist was baptized with that Holy Spirit from the tabernacle in his mother's womb. That Holy Spirit was with, with him all the time until it left him and went with Jesus Christ in the Jordan River. So you're seeing a passing of the Holy Spirit baton all the way through the scriptures to Jesus Christ. And then he says, if I don't leave, I can't send the helper to you. See that helper, Holy Spirit, that was in the temple, tabernacle of Moses? That is the witness, water witness, testifying for the word. And I know that 100% for a fact, 100% absolute, like this absolute terms this fellow's using. And he wants to turn transform that into God. Okay, what are you going to do with God who was? God who is, God who is to come, the Almighty. Addressing as the Lord God, the Lamb in Revelation. And the Lamb speaking to him. And everybody wants to make the Lamb into the Almighty. Not everybody, of course, but that is the common mistake that people make. And that shows that they have been baptized by the, into the body of the Antichrist, and they are blinded by denominationalism. Once you become mature, then you can tell by the words they use. You can tell how they are mixing together the water and the blood and how they're doing it. 
That's what denominationalism is. That's why there's 20,000 denominations of professing Christians. Because they take the water and the blood and they mix it together in all these different ways. When you separate them and realize, holy cow, Paul, Barnabas, and, you know, and Titus, they're for the body of Christ, gospel of the grace of God. And Peter, John, and James, they're gospel of the kingdom. The thing that confuses people is Paul preaches the kingdom and he preaches the gospel of the grace of God. When Paul was first raised up, all there was was the gospel of the kingdom. The, our gospel was given to him through a series of revelations, Galatians 1, 11, and 12. A series of revelations. That's what he says over and over again what he received through revelations. Our gospel is according to the revelation of the mystery. And that mystery is the wisdom given him that Peter talks about that Peter can't get to it. And when he wrote Second Peter and said this stuff's hard to understand, that was at the end of his life. That was decades after Paul and their meeting. That was after Paul received what he received. And it was way I mean, it was way after that and then it was well after 50 ad's when they had the meeting in jerusalem peter's writing what in about 68 68 i have to look that up again it's been a while since i've done all the my christian work when he wrote uh second peter first second peter so um what other link to have this is how you can get my and these prices change they're, or Amazon.com, they're ordering my book in vast numbers and then selling them, giving discounts and things like that. So the price goes up to $66. Sometimes it's down to $52. Here's a hardcover, cheapest price I've seen. Here's a used one for $66. And then a hardcover, uh, there's new from $47. If you get it from me, then it's $100. But I have to pay for it to be shipped to me and then I have to pay for it to be shipped to you. And it's going to be autographed and it's going to be numbered of the first numbered in the in the um, as far as the first edition thing okay so that's what i have to share with you out oh, it's a little more than average and i felt inspired this morning to uh, get this mr fifth mystery report the sixth mystery report like i said earlier is already put together it needs to be finalized and then we'll do this again likely in the month of December. So I hope that you'll support the research and um, help me to help more people to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. You can do that by coming here to tarot03.com. I showed you how to subscribe right down here. You can donate through Zelle if you want to. You can donate through uh, PayPal right here and Cash App right here. If you want to get a copy of my book, you want to get your Nano Silver, whatever you want, you write to me right here and put something in the topic and the subject title, like I uh, want to subscribe, want Nano Silver, and don't use PayPal or something like that, and we'll get you fixed up. And that's all I can think of to share with you on this mystery report. Appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information right here at terrorsworld3.com, and I'll see you on the next mystery report. It should be coming out, and should be one more for the year, and should be coming out in December.